peace and greetings. Welcome to the Network of Awareness, where we pursue knowledge to expose toxic conditioning, propaganda, and global lies, inspiring critical thinking for a meaningful reality rooted in universal truths and empowering awareness. And our mission today, as always, is to explore conscious minds, as we will do with my guest, Kiti, who I've met and I've had the pleasure of getting to know on TikTok. And she's going to share some information on the importance and the reason why it's so paramount in modern day society to apply critical thinking to our lives. And we're going to get deep into this subject of critical thinking, because as always, as we explore these conscious minds that come on to the network of awareness, we got to uncover the intricacies of social sciences, society and culture, and most importantly, our spirituality. So in in the topic of this discussion of critical thinking, there's a couple of things I want to mention here that we're going to go over because... Critical thinking helps you to navigate this modern maze that wants to keep you away from yourself, wants to keep you from not thinking and just go along with the status quo. And in this modern world where information cascades like an unending torrent and truth seems to be elusive as a mirage like in the desert, there exists like a beacon. And in this raising of consciousness and this grand awakening, A beacon of light when it comes to critical thinking guides us through the darkness and it empowers us to discern fact from fiction and that ignites that flame of reason within us. And this beacon is critical thinking and it is a it is the it's the symphony of voices that are clamoring for our attention and it stands as our most potent weapon and our most vital tool, our greatest ally. In this spiritual battle and warfare that we have to go through in this three-dimensional realm. So why, you might ask, is critical thinking paramount in today's society? The answers lie in the very fabric of our existence. And we're going to discuss some of these things today with my guest, Kiti. So without further ado, let's bring the sister, the goddess, the queen on to the show. And we're going to get her here in just a moment. Let's go. My aura is a network full of awareness and gifts like Aura, the informational list. You are now tuned in to the network of awareness. To the network of awareness. All right. All right. So let's welcome Kiti to the Network of Awareness. Peace, love and light and Supreme Grand Rising to you, sis. Supreme Grand Rising to you. How are you? Thank you. Much gratitude for having me on. Yeah, you're very welcome. And it's a divine honor to have you on my Network of Awareness today. And I know that you're going to provide a very grand amount of awareness to the people today with the knowledge, wisdom and overstanding and understanding that you have. So let's get into it. First question is, what is thinking? For those that may not know what thinking is. What thinking is. (laughs) So thinking is at its simplest, the act of processing information, right? Whether the information comes from within or without, it's the processing of it that makes it thinking. Thinking is different from having thoughts. There is a there's a difference. Thoughts are random. Thinking is strategic. Oh, right. Go ahead, continue. Because and, and the reason why I ask you this question before you continue is because people really think they're thinking yeah. and they're really not because they don't know what yeah. thinking is. So go ahead, okay. sis. Uh, so thoughts are will just pop up in your head randomly from nowhere. All of a sudden, just a thought runs across your mind. So for an example, if you have a thought, if you're busy doing something and you're really focused on what your that task at hand and the thought pops across your mind, the action of Grabbing that thought and changing your focus to what that thought was is the thinking. That's the thinking, right? So many people I know believe that they are thinking when actually they're just letting their thoughts run. And then in a situation, they do or something will happen and they just do the first.
first thing that comes into their head, right? So when we talk about thinking and how it is separate from just that grabbing of the thought is processing. Intention is the biggest key in thinking. Mm. Now let's segue into what critical thinking is. Critical thinking is thinking with the ability to step away from the emotion that is brought up by the thought. That is critical thinking. Being able to say, I know I feel this way about something, yet I need to process this information so that I can actively make a decision or take an action opposed to reacting in the emotion. That is the biggest, I won't say the biggest, that's probably the smallest, most easiest way to explain it. The simplest way to explain it is taking when you have, when you're thinking, being able able to separate the emotion that comes away from the thing that you're thinking. So for example, we're dropping bombs right now. So (laughs) you're going to be hearing a lot of this during this conversation. (laughs) So, for example, let's say, I don't know, you will take something simple like a car accident, right? Two people have a fender bender and they both jump out screaming, you did this and you did that. There's this argument. The person that's able to stop, say, hey, we had this crash, right? Where do we go from here? Right? Yes, I'm upset. My car is messed up. I'm going to have to spend some money. Your car, like, but what do we do from here? That person that is able able to stop and say, let's not argue about this. Let's actively see what we can do to address this situation. That person is the one that used the critical thinking. And it's usually now you have the instances where both parties are at each other, but it's normally one that has the lack of critical thinking and is so wrapped up in the emotion of what just happened that they can't step away to find the solution. Because critical thinking is always looking for the solution solution to what it's thinking about, what the thought pattern is. It's the, if something is in my mind and I'm thinking about it, that means that it's something that needs to be addressed. And the critical thinking is always looking for that solution so that it can move on to the next thought. So it can move on. It doesn't, you critical, you don't want to be stuck on the same thing over and over. That's not critical thinking. And it's so true because critical thinking obviously is paramount in today's society, right? And the answers always lie in the in the truth of what the universe already knows. And yeah. that truth is within each and every one of us, whether we are aware of it or not. Yes. And we, as these avatars, these spiritual beings in these avatar bodies, when these skin school suits or these meat suits or uh, this flesh and bone that we inhabit on this planet, on this plane, uh, we are in an existence existence or in a world where misinformation spreads like wildfire. And I think it's happening now more than ever with the technology that we have and that really manipulates and dictates what is and what isn't, especially with the whole censorship thing and shadow banning and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. I call it the virtual governments. Yes. Information spreads like wildfire, opinions masquerade as facts, and where the line between reality and illusion blurs with each passing moment, we find ourselves in a landscape where critical thinking is not just a luxury. It is literally a necessity. It's like a lifeline amidst this avalanche of deceit and confusion, which I like to call the legacy of lies. And what's happening right now with the critical thinking, with us loving ourselves, looking within ourselves for the answers, a lot of that legacy of lies is now being dispelled by the truth, which is always absolute. You talk about how we can decipher the deluge of the news headlines, the, the propaganda the lies that come from the institutions of the world, like your polytrix and your your commercial medias and all of these treacherous institutions that are specifically there to keep you not only in a state of fear, but also that fear allows you or, or makes you become unaware of your true self. How do we navigate that? Right. Right. The, when you come up against these things, you hear, you hear the propaganda when you have to face these things 
things and you're getting bombarded with left and right, what makes sense? I think so many of us get wrapped up in our traditions, what we were passed down from our parents, what mama said, what papa said, what grandma said, my, my uncle used to do this and I know somebody over here to do that. We get so wrapped up in, in the outside connections that we have to other people that we don't actually settle in with ourselves and look in ourselves and get to know ourselves. So there is a key. And a part of getting to know yourself is understanding the things that make you fearful and where those fear fearful things come from. Now, in this age, it's always something to scare you. Look over here. Ooh, they're having a war. Look over here. Ooh, you're going to go to hell because you didn't feed your cat on time and you're not being a good steward. There's all these things. But if you step away from the emotion that they cause and think about them logically, they will not make sense. And a part of being able to critically think your way through these processes is to not fight. I guess it is to actually to fight against the cognitive dissonance, right? We have to fight against the cognitive dissonance that comes when we're faced with a truth that exposes the lie that we love, right? Can you say that one more time? <laughs> cognitive dissonance is when we are faced with the truth that exposes the lie that we love. You heard it here on the Network of Awareness. You just got a great understanding of what cognitive dissonance is from Kiti and how that is happening right now. Some of you are going through that while you're listening to this podcast episode on critical thinking. All right. And I'm glad you just you explain what cognitive dissonance is because I've had conversations, very in-depth conversations with you and others within the conscious minority community that I like to call it because not everybody is conscious of themselves and aware of themselves right. and who they truly are. But in these conversations, we get a lot of cognitive dissonance, right? And I've even seen you help these people that have that cognitive dissonance. But there's only so much we can do for them, right? In that moment. Yeah. And even though they may appreciate it, they still have to take accountability. And yeah. once that, you know, that live ends and they turn their phones off or they're no longer looking at that screen or on the computer and being in that social media platform, which I like to call the re virtual realities, you know, they have to now go within their physical reality and really manifest that change yeah. that if they truly desire will happen, but they got to let go of everything that people told them is and isn't yeah. and really find that and rediscovering go. You got to reprogram yourself when you're suffering from cognitive dissonance. You really do. do. And it's yeah. going to be for everybody listening. It's going to be an extremely painful experience. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be pleasant whatsoever. Not even a yeah, little bit. Not even a little. No. Not even a little bit. Matter of fact, I had shared this post yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. I shared it on TikTok. And I'm just going to pull it up here because there's two things I'm going to read here. And I want you to expound on both of them. So we're going to go one by one. Okay. The masses never thirsted for truth. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. And that is a quote from Gustave Le Bon. He was a philosopher, teacher. I believe he was also a historian from 1841 to 1931. But I want you to expound on that because you and I have been made to look the victim when we're dispelling the illusions that have been given where people's cognitive dissonance kicks in. That's how we become the victim. And I'm not saying that you and I are victims, but that's how we get yeah. treated. And a lot of times, especially if it's a community amongst narcissists, it'll take one one narcissist that has the most influence, and I've experienced in different organizations, that the one narcissist that has the influence over the mass of people, if you go against what they're teaching or what they say to be true, nine times out of ten, they have nothing to back it up. But when you destroy their illusions, they they get the flying monkeys, as it's called in the, the clinical psychology world, to attack you and to mm -hmm. slander you and make you into the victim because you don't know what you're talking about or you're going against something 
something against the cult, so to speak, the cultic Absolutely. mindset, the group-like thinking. And those masses thirst for the truth, like he says, and whoever can supply them with the illusion is easily their master. Why? Because they're not applying critical thinking when engaging with whoever. They're looking, they have that, what's called the, what is it? I think Billy Carson said that term is deemed as cargo cult mentality, where anything that is, they're looking for some type of guidance instead of finding the guidance within themselves. They're looking for a Lord and master. They're looking for their God outside of themselves. So can you expound on that? Man, that's an awesome quote. That, why? Why do people love the feeling good? They love to feel good. They love anything that's going to make them feel good. And the reason why it has to come from with outside themselves is because they're scared of what's inside, right? You've been most 99.9% of the people on this planet right now in this 3D projection have been brought up in a system that breeds fear from the time you are concepted in conception while you are still a little psycho you are little you your little heart you just now forming your parents have been fed. All of these things are passed down in your DNA. It's in your parents' DNA. So before you even got here, there was a little, there was that fear program in you. And from the time they bring you home, there's all these things. And you've been taught from a child to not think for yourself. Do what I do what I say and not what I do. I know you had that thought, but I say no, that's wrong. Don't don't ask me questions. So many of us came up in a, a in a environment where you, they couldn't ask questions. And then you get sent to school where you're not allowed to ask questions unless the question makes sense to someone else. Not And so you begin to be trained. That is how you are supposed to behave and interact with all information and everything. So now you don't trust your own self. You don't trust your own thoughts. You don't trust your own feelings. You don't trust your own gut intuition because you have been trained to not to. And so that's the first step in getting back to your critical thinking is understanding that you have been trained to be scared of critical thinking. Absolutely. The, I, I, when you were saying about asking questions, as long as the person is like, they feel that you're asking the right question that agrees with them. I can't help to think with these camps, these Hebrew Israelites, these Christians, these Islamic churches, synagogues, this is the type of energy usually that you get from the so-called elders or people in leadership. Yeah. When you ask a question, they'll say, let me ask you this question. You didn't even answer the question that I'm asking. And that is a form of mental manipulation. Whenever you answer a question with a question, you are training that person not to think about what they want to think about, but to think about what you want them to think about. Yep. You get a lot of that Shogun, Shogun of Harlem. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the master. Much. I'm the master. I, you're well, not I, the I, you master. do what I tell you to do. You don't you don't question me. I know these scriptures from front to back. I've been reading them for 20 years. Even though I'm lost in the sauce, I'm gonna make you think that I got it all together because I read this one book and yeah. I know how to interpret it cardinally. <laughs> cardinally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what makes why it turns the person that's a critical thinker and moves outside of the norm and will tell you that you can think. For for yourself and that you don't have to be afraid of your own thoughts and wonderings, that you don't have to suppress what you know to be true from what you've gotten from inside you and how to be a better version of yourself. Why do we become victims? Because you are deep when you deprogram. So we all saw the matrix, right? Everybody's seen the most, most people have seen the matrix. And so what they were fighting about, like everybody's, oh, Oh, it's a computer program. What was the, let's take it all the way down to the little minute point of the movie. Why were they being chased? Why did the machines want to catch the free people? Because they were unplugged the batteries from the matrix. Yes, indeed. They were 
They were causing you to no longer be the power source. You are your own power source, yet you give your power to someone else. Absolutely. Go ahead, continue. Oh, and as you are a person who is speaking the truth and doing your best to put out the information so people can unplug themselves. So that's where the spiritual people in the spiritual community who get a big head. I'm pl- unplugging people all the time. No, you're not. You're a procurer and a sharer of information. And that person has got to unplug themselves. Everything leads back to self. But even when you are that person that's giving the information and helping people to unplug themselves, whether it's in the form of their diet, whether it's in the form of teaching them how to meditate, whether it's in the form of teaching them how to critically think. So many times in history, we have seen those outliers literally not just become the proverbial victim of the narcissist, but a true victim in this society. They have taken out so many great thinkers out of the collective because of the truth that they were sharing. And so you have to be able to see that as well. Why? Why if that wasn't the case or if that wasn't the truth, did they make sure that this person wasn't able to speak it anymore? Dropping a lot of bombs today. Kiti's dropping a lot of those truth bombs, I like to call them. They, you're not getting any mumble jumble today on the network of awareness. No, do you ever. Let's, I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate for the listeners that may process these types of thoughts when it comes to critical thinking, because okay. some may argue that critical thinking is a luxury that's specifically reserved for the intellectual elite that's on this planet. You have a lot of people that think that way and that it's too difficult or it's too consuming for the average person to cultivate this type of thought process because they're like, I'm not people say I'm not that smart. I'm not an intellectual like you. I'm not smart like you, sis. You know, how many times that we've heard that on lives on TikTok? (laughs) And then we got to be like, whoa, slow down. No, you are. You just haven't realized it yet. You're just the unrealized potential right now. That's it. And but nothing can be further from the truth. Right. So critical thinking is not this exclusive club or domain for philosophers or, or scientists or doctors or people who have gone through some in-depth academic study. Really what it is, is a skill that can be learned by anybody and it can be honed onto and it can be applied by anyone willing to embark on the journey of that self-discovery and that intellectual growth. Critical thinking is not about having all the answers. I'm going to say that again. Critical thinking is not about having the, all the answers and it's really not about being right because that's another problem we have. And we're going to talk about that, Keti. I want you to expound on this desire that our people have for wanting to be right all all the time. It's not about having all the answers. It's not about asking the right questions. It's about challenging our own belief systems. And and many of you have talked about this before. If you break down the word belief or believe in the middle, smack in the middle lies the word lie. It's a lie. You are be lying to yourself. It's confronting the biases that we've been socially conditioned since you eloquently explain in if that's been going on in the womb. Because a lot of times your mother will transfer that emotional charge to you on whatever her insecurities and fears are. And then you can, you know, you take that on and you inherit it. It's about asking the right questions, about challenging our belief systems. It's about confronting our biases. It's about embracing the discomfort of uncertainty, which that discomfort is always going to come to to you when the truth smacks you in the face. And you're just going to have to accept it until you can move on. And it's about being willing to admit when you're wrong. And it's also when you're having these dialogues with people, not only just admit to you're wrong, because admitting when you're wrong, I'm going to tell you, it is life transforming. It can really transcend somebody's life to a whole new paradigm. But it's also revising our opinions in the light of new evidence and engaging in a civil discourse or discussion with those who may disagree with you, which what means people, y'all always hear me say it. If you can't agree to disagree, then you shouldn't even be talking to each other because you're never going to be able to respect each other. And within our communities, and it's, let's just call it what it is, especially within the melanated communities, this is a big issue because everybody has the desire to want to be right. And most of the time, everybody's operating off of un, unvalidated opinions that really don't support a damn thing. But there's this thing where we can't agree to 
disagree. And that's where if you can't do that, you're not even really respecting the spiritual being that you're encountering at that present moment. So can you expound on this whole thing about why people have this desire to want to be right all the time and how we can't agree to disagree as well? Yeah, I can. I want to go back a little bit. And before I get there, I want to touch on the idea that this is for some philosophers. The critical thinking isn't for the... So you're born with it. You're born knowing how to do it, actually, because nobody has to teach a baby to cry when they're hungry, to cry when they want about... They learn that they have thoughts. I need people to stop thinking that them babies do not come out having thoughts. They have a brain. It works. It works. And the reason we know it works is because there are things that you never have to teach a child. They just learn it because of their critical thinking. They look at something, realize it, process it, and decide to take an action. They know if I cry this way, I'm if I cry, that person will come and bring me bottle, feed me. And if I cry, that person will come and change me. And as they grow, they know they learn little manipulations because they study you. No one has to teach your children how to manipulate you. That's a part of critical thinking. Critical thinking does not always happen. And then the person does the right thing. It's a lot of good critical thinkers out here. And most of them are con artists. That's how they trick y'all. They using the skills that they telling you not to use to steal your stuff. Oh, story of my life. Dealing with people. Yeah, I've had a lot of that done to me. So that's first and foremost. This is not a, you don't have to go to school for years and years. You literally first have got to learn to trust yourself enough to be able to think for yourself and don't be scared of your thoughts and your feelings, but learn how to step away and look at something logically, truthfully, not how you feel about it. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. I don't like when people do that. Okay, you don't like when people do that. Why? Right. Why don't you like when people do that? Simple answers because you're a narcissist. (laughs) That's why. Yeah, I have to to block a lot of people like that on social media. Yeah, I don't like when you... Why don't you like it? Like, dig into that. Go dig into that and then come back and talk to me. Right. Why don't you like that? Right? But people don't want to do that. They will... I feel this way and it's a trauma. It's a trauma response to abandon critical thinking. And that's why you don't have to be a scholar. Once you understand that the reason why you don't use your critical thinking has nothing to do with what you've learned or haven't learned externally. It has everything to do with that point right there. So true. Yeah. And as far as us needing to be right, it's because people, because it's not our community, because I see people from other communities and they battle it out and they're still that same thing. But we're dealing with the spiritual community and us. That needs to be right is it's a trauma response. Right. These things are trauma-based responses that to actually effectively use your critical thinking, you have to be able to separate from the emotion caused by that trauma. That's how you'll be able to heal yourself from that trauma and let it go. You, We were put down, not listened to. And now I finally got somebody listening to me. And I'm scared to be wrong because if I'm wrong, nobody will ever listen to me again. And I just want to be loved and I just want to be seen, right? All of these things feed into this idea of I need to be right because you're fearful that if you're wrong, you're rejected. When you learn more from the things that you do wrong than the things that you get right. Another bomb. Another truth bomb. So true. Yeah, we, Kiti, we live in a world that is plagued by polarization and tribalism. We encounter this every day. Critical thinking is that bridge that connects the gaps of these ideological divides that people have. And it really brings us closer together in the pursuit of truth and understanding, which the understanding will always lead to the ultimate truth of that comes from the inner standing, that truth of the universe, that universal truth that we all need to be rooted in. But also, too, the most compelling reason why critical thinking is paramount in today's society is because it empowers us to be active participants in our own life. It allows us to take control 
of our destiny so that we can shape our future and our present moments and leave a lasting impact on the world that we live in. And in a world where we're bombarded with a lot of information like you were, you and I were talking about before, and I heard you talking about this yesterday too. We're bombarded with so much information from all different directions. It reminds me of growing up in New York City as a kid. And I just remember that I always had this sensory overload when walking the streets of the Bronx or Manhattan. It's, you got the cars beeping, driving by. You got people having all different, a multitude of different types of conversations. Most of the energy was very erratic and very high strung, where it's like anything could pop off at any given moment. You got to watch your back because every most people are predatory and then some people are good. And it, it, it was just a, a sensory overload. And I used to always think like, how would my life have been if I grew up in the country where I can just hear the birds and the water and the streams and have that peace and tranquility? Would I have been a different person growing up as a kid? Because that sensory overload traumatizes all of us that grow up in the metropolitan areas. We're not meant to be piled up in each other. We're not meant to live in projects where you got people stacked up next to each other and all around each other. And then you don't, all types of things happen that you have to engage with. But then that becomes, that sensory overload becomes the norm. And that, and it really deprives you from having critical thinking because the sensory overload, you're getting input from other people and you're just wanting to be like you said accepted love appreciated heard you want to connect to some type of community or tribe and then most of the time we're connecting with tribes and communities that really don't serve us well and we got to break free from that and it takes time people i really want to emphasize that the purpose of this episode on why kiti and i are talking today is to really help you to gain an understanding and overstand on this truth that it is something that's going to be a, a never really a never end process like it is for you and I, Kiti, right? We're not perfect. We st- There's still this these things we got to battle when it comes to the things we've been conditioned to socially within our families and, and with people and also the battle with allowing the ego to have its place at the proper time instead of the inappropriate times. <laughs> so right. let's talk about how critical thinking frees us from the shackles of passivity, right? Because we got a lot of passive aggressive energy going out there today. I know there's a lot of that here in Florida. There's <laughs> a lot of passive aggressiveness here in Florida, boy. But also how it compels us to question the authority and challenge the status quo and to demand accountability from those that are in power and all that. But also accountability for ourselves. If you can, you know, talk about that. The best way that you use, you can use your critical thinking. Let me back up. The reason why it's important that we use our critical thinking in these in for that is because it begin you can begin to break down these narratives, right? And so as you break down the narratives and you begin to understand what the truth is and understand because you've now taken it in and you see how it applies to you and then overstand it so you know how it applies to everything around you, you begin to see where, yeah, we've been bamboozled. And so you have to, it it almost, I would say it begins to light a fire And so there's not this half, oh, let me sit by the side and wait for someone else because you then see that the longer I sit in this and don't make active movement, now I have my family behind me. Now I have my children. Now I have those loved ones who maybe aren't there yet, but need that example. Our communities need that example. So as far as Oh, here we got just, I get aggression, aggression. I don't even run into too many people. They just flat out aggressive. It's not even passive aggressiveness that I'm dealing with over here. So it's a literal fight to to get people to see that I use my brain. So the same things and the tricks that you use to get people to be docile doesn't work on me. And when you begin, as people begin to use their critical thinking in these situations, when they come up against these patterns, of aggressive and aggressive situations. They'll understand how to let it be known that doesn't work on me. They'll also understand when to let that person have it and get as much information as they can from someone who doesn't understand who you are because you use your critical thinking because they don't know. Always assume that everyone who 
is coming to talk to you thinks that you don't think for yourself. That's that that helped me a lot with learning how to use my critical thinking. It was like, okay, they think I'm stupid anyway. My apologies for laughing because you know what you're saying is really not funny, but I'm laughing because of how that is such a common thing that happens. But I love the fact that you are so self-aware of that. And that shows that just that comment right there, Kiti, from mm-hmm. my perspective, I can identify how much you utilize critical thinking just with that realization <laughs> with yourself and your experience with the world and how you connect to it and what is happening in your reality, right? Because let's just drop a bomb for that because that was a profound statement in my opinion. Continue. <laughs> I just wanted to say yeah, that. Yeah, so you'll, and you'll find that most people look, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah, we'll take a moment. We'll play, let's play a quick commercial. And for those that, for those, we're going to take a quick second here, KT, just to make a quick announcement. If you really want to support us, please go on to, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or a Podchaser, those are three platforms where you can leave a, a review and a rating. I prefer Apple because Apple is the most prominent of the three, but we ask you here at the Network of Awareness that if you enjoy these episodes, please leave us a, a brief review and also leave us a rating. We still hold the five-star rating for the past five years, which I find to be extremely phenomenal. And I want to thank you all for that. But leave us a review because what that does is that helps us to go up in the rankings and it gives us more visibility for free because just like with the algorithms, when you leave a review, it allows that podcast to be seen and be accessible to more people on the totem pole, so to speak. So I ask that if if you'd enjoy the network of awareness, please leave a review, leave a, a, a rating. And also download the shows. And as many of you have been doing an awesome job, I used to, many of you used to hear me say, I can't wait till I get to 10,000 downloads a month. I've surpassed that. We're getting close to 20,000. So we're doubling it. So let's just keep growing and let's play this quick commercial real quick. Life is an unpredictable and amazing journey. Our ever-changing conditions within today's society and the constant new trends influencing cultures can become overwhelming to say the least. But no worries. The Network of Awareness podcast radio show brings peace of mind in these challenging times. Follow us on your favorite podcast listening app and join our community of Network of Awareness at networkofawareness.com. For now, tuned in to the Network of Awareness. To the Network of Awareness. All right. So we're back with Kitsi and you were making a point. So please continue. Yeah. So most people you run up against who think they're smart and they automatically look at other people like they're stupid or that they don't think for themselves. Every And what's crazy is those same people you'll find are the people that don't think for themselves. Exactly. They are fully running another program. So when you think about that, it's like, why do I, why would I argue with someone who is running a program that I don't want to be a part of anymore? So you have to learn when to pick your battles. That's where the question about ego came in, learn when to use it. And so that's how you know the difference, whether you as an individual are working off your false ego or if you're working off your true innate ego, right? Because we all have that. That's a part of the thing that helps us have that confidence and be emboldened in our statements. And there's nothing wrong with having that. It's when you have the false version of that which is where those narcissistic traits and that need to be right and that inability to actually listen effectively. And when you listen, you want to take in the information and listen to what the person is saying so that you can have a true understanding of what they're saying. It doesn't mean you have to agree, but you definitely have to understand the premise that they're putting forth before you can respond to it. People listen to respond. They're ready ready for the fight. They're ready for the back and forth. And that's the false ego. And so that's how you and yourself know where you're operating from and what you have to work on. When you run against, when you come up against something
something in someone that's running off that false ego and that program that you're trying to walk away from, a lot of times it's better just to let them talk and not even argue. You listen because now you're learning what you're up against and you're learning how to be able to navigate through the people who behave and talk and think and act that way. This is critical thinking doesn't stop on one thing. It's literally a part of your everyday life from the time your eyes open to the time when they close again. It's a part. It's everything you intake should be. You should have this critical thinking. Some things are definitely going to come by habit. And those are things that you don't have to think about. Like most people don't have to think about get up, go take a shower, brush your teeth. The, like they spend their time thinking about other things. So what are you thinking about? Are you actively protecting your thoughts? Are you grabbing thoughts that you don't necessarily align with? Because none of us are exempt from those thoughts that don't quite align with what we know. They're false How narratives. How you do? From an old program that you're still trying to get rid of, from outside energies, from being stacked on top of each other. We share energy, we share emotion, all of those things because we are all at our core connected. Essentially, we are all the one. We're connected. There's no denying that. We're connected to everything and everything is connected to us and it's a constant energy change. So are you protecting your mind? Are you protecting your thoughts? Are you grabbing the thoughts that you do not want that pop in there and say, no, that actually is not true. That actually is not what I want. Counteracting those thoughts and actually actively moving to think, to control what you're thinking. Critical thinking is a constant process. It is you being on your toes mentally, for lack of a better uh, term. So true. So for the people that are hearing this for the first time, this whole understanding of what critical thinking is, what's some advice you can give to the person who is brand new to the this understanding so that they can make it their understanding. What are some of the first steps that the human being or the spiritual being having a physical experience here, right, can start doing or practicing to really master this art and this way of life called critical thinking? Some of the great tools that helped me was definitely my meditation, right? Meditation helped me a lot. And I actually am somebody who has 50 trains, 50 train tracks in my brain, all with going 100,000 miles an hour. All the conductors is hanging out the window, screaming at the top of their lung. Like it's thought crazy. So when I first started meditating, it was like, oh man, what do you mean quiet? What do you mean center? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> so I, I started using some sound therapy. I wanted to put that out about how my mind works because I know it's a lot of people that goes, I don't know, I can't meditate, I can't quiet. Sound therapy works great for people that have that issue like I do because you begin to focus on the sound. And so that's your training. You have to train yourself to focus in on a thought because when you can focus in on the thought, then you can actually process it and go through it. And writing in your journal, writing your thoughts out always, just get it out and then reread it and then think about what you wrote and really be honest away from how you feel. Separate your feeling for a minute. Not, please understand when I say separate from your feeling, I don't mean don't acknowledge it and pretend like it's not there. That's what that means. That's not what that means. Definitely acknowledge the feeling. If you, if it hurts, you stub, you stub your toe. It's, oh, my toe hurt, but it's not broken. So it doesn't need medical attention. So you don't have to focus focus on the toe hurting, right? It's okay. Let me make sure I'm not bleeding. I'm good. And you keep going, right? Acknowledge it, but step aside away from it so you can figure out what needs to be done. And writing out in your journal, your thoughts in a meditation, and then going back and reading them. Even when you're angry, so-and-so made me mad. My husband did this. My wife did this. Do that. Before you respond to the situation that made you mad, go write it down and then read it. Read your thoughts, right? And then you'll find most times you'll go, oh, no, that wasn't logical at all. And then 
then once you can train yourself to do that, it's, it really comes automatically because literally that's the rewire of your brain because now you're start you're actually starting to do the critical thinking when you say, okay, I'm not going to react right now because I want to get better. Like just the action of wanting to will help to start to rewire those things in your mind that you have been trained to do that actually go against your natural instinct. Your natural instinct always wants to come back. It always wants to come back. It's under there screaming like, you're doing it all wrong, I know, <laughs> right? It's in there screaming. So when you begin to open it up, it will come back to you and get easier. So Wow. So I want to cover a particular topic that kind of coincides with this present day before we actually conclude this episode. It's something you and I talked about yesterday and this morning or this in this AM. And that's with the whole distraction thing that's going on right now with the things that the commercial media and the powers that shouldn't be are giving us when it comes to astrology and the things that are happening in the cosmos or in the skies. And there's this big, huge anticipation of what's going to happen on April 8th with the solar eclipse and whether it's Nibiru coming in as the new star passing through. Some people think it's a lunar eclipse that's going to happen. We're going to have the natural narrative is that we're going to have three days of darkness. We're going to be possibly losing electricity. Military forces are being deployed throughout the United Shenanigans of America because people are going to be losing their mind. We might be going through the movie 28 Days and the people that got the science appliance injected in their arm are going to start going crazy. And I'm like, they're already crazy. They're crazy for just putting that in their arm. (laughs) I mean, what are you talking about? I really want you to expound on this thing because a lot of it from what I've been experiencing and my perceptions, me being the observer within me is observing this and being like, my higher self is like, this is crazy. This is this is what they do. Don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in that. Why? Simple. I create my own reality. So the reality that I'm experiencing is the one that I create, not the one they create for me. So I want to, to expound on this when it comes to critical thinking, because even some people in the so-called conscious community are having states of fear in in regards to this everybody feels like they they're living their life within what is it what let me look at this calendar how many days do we have a weeks so let me look at this calendar here because literally today is the 26th and let me pull this out of here so we on the today's tuesday the 26th today's kwanzaa supposedly and so we got literally we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen days sounds like a movie, right? 13 days. (laughs) One of those apocalypse movies of zombies. But we got 13 days before this super event, supposedly, that is going to happen where some people are even saying we're going to get these superpowers or we're going to come back into remembrance. And I think that energetically, we are going to have certain powers and abilities in hands. But some people are like, oh, we're going to become giants and, you know, we're going to be flying and cyclops and, you know, all this other stuff. And hey, if it happens, then I don't think that's going to happen. But hey, if it does, I'll, I'll be in amazement. I'll be like, hey, I'm in my own Marvel comic movie. Great. Wonderful. Let me see if I can fly. What can I do? But I really want to just, you know, discuss this before we end the show, because this is so important that people listen to this, because this goes back to that cognitive dissonance. It goes back to that fear mongering that we accept and embrace because we're not use, utilizing critical thinking. And as much as people like to think that they're conscious and aware, I I see a lot of people that are still feeding that beast system. They're still feeding the fear and they're allowing the fear to become their reality. So can you really explain all that? Because you talked about it earlier and I just want you to share it on the podcast. Yes, it's definitely a distraction. And you'll find a lot of people in the spiritual community that feel like they want to talk about it to in, inform the other people. There's people that are scared and want to talk about it. And that's the reason 
why it's a big distraction. Because at this point, especially in the spiritual community, we ought to know that giving these things energy is going to help them manifest. That's not something that we don't know. We know that the state of the energetic world as a whole is mostly in fear. And you have the pockets of us that are rising above that. We're not living in fear. We're manifesting that good life. We're living that heaven on earth because that's what we're calling in. We under, we have that inner standing. And I was saying when we were on the live before having the conversation that these things are a distraction because we spend so much time, oh, look over here and what's that going to happen over there? And you're not looking into yourself, which is where your answers come from for you. Having that inner dialogue with yourself is where that those answers are going to come from being able to think that out for yourself. But instead, we have these spaces where we're pushing this fear. It's almost like we're helping to manifest the thing that we say we don't want. And that's the part of the thing. It's like we're OK. We're not thinking you you we say you say we're thinking, but then we're behaving in a way that's showing that we didn't really think about this. We got caught up in the emotion of something that we saw and felt like, oh, 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 now we need to talk about that is a trigger and fear response is exactly what that is. Because if there's a big event on in the solar on the eclipse and let's say people get powers, I don't know. No, okay. Let's say they do. We'll see it when it gets there. And so this idea of, ooh, what's going to happen in the future when everything is now is a fear response. It's, oh, what might let's, we have to prepare. Yeah, you should always, you, we know that now continues to be now on an infinite plane. Like we don't, at right at this second in this 3D realm we living in. So yeah, you need food. There are things that you can actively do to prepare because you've thought about the narrative that's been placed out there. So there's a narrative that has everybody running in fear. So I definitely know I need to pr prepare because with all that fear going on, they going to manifest themselves something. And I need to be prepared to not be involved in that manifestation. <laughs> so that's one thing. And then a whole nother thing where we are literally putting so much thought and emphasis on the thing where now are we really just trying to see what's going on or are we a part of the problem with things being brought in and manifested in this realm that we don't prefer? And that's a big, that's always my question. Are you, or why are we talking about this? It is a distraction and it's one thing to have a quick discussion. Let's go over it. This is what we see. This is what they said. I'm not, and then move on. But the constant discussion means brings the constant thought pattern. That's constant energy put on that thing. And for sure, you're going to manifest something that you don't prefer when you do that. I agree. I agree. I concur. <laughs> I concur unequivocally, especially when you're, it's one thing with two people, three people, but when you start adding even more energy, you got five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12, 20, 30, 40, yeah. 50 people all giving that energy. The probability of it manifesting happens a lot quicker. Yes. And it becomes the reality, right? And that's why it's so important for critical thinking because one thing I always say is that we got to keep in mind that anything that comes from these institutions and these powers that shouldn't be, when have they ever given you something when it comes to information that is in your benefit? I'll wait because you can, you're can. you never going to be able to tell me and give me an answer for that because there's not since, let's just talk about the United Shenanigans of America. Since since the inception of this corporation, because it is not a country, okay? Turtle Island is the land of the peoples, all right? This is Tom Mary. This is the land of Tom Mary. This is not the land of the United Shenanigans of America. Make that clear. But what the United Shenanigans of America is, it's a corporation from the European British elite system. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's a representation. It's basically the bully. It's the strong arm. It's the one that handles all the business, that takes care of all the dirty work. And we just happen to be in this corporation. 
happen. So I want people to really understand that when has this corporation have ever provided you with valuable information that's supposed to empower you, the individual, or you with your family? It hasn't happened. And furthermore, just in, since 2020 with the scandemic, they literally told you, we do not care about you. We are trying to decimate you. We do not want you here anymore. We have what's called the depopulation agenda, and we are putting it into action, okay? That's the agenda, is to depopulate, is to deregulate you from yourself, you from your higher self, I should say. I say that to say this, people, we got to start critically thinking. It is paramount. It is a way of life, and I'm going to talk about that in the concluding, concluding thoughts of this episode, but we really have to really step back, like Keithy said, and really be quiet and listen, because the observer is the best listener, right? The observer within you is the best listener. And sometimes it's just best to listen because what's that cliche saying? If you really want to get to know somebody and you want to know how full of shit they are, just let them talk. <laughs> and you'll find out everything you need to know about that person. But going back to what we was talking about earlier, people have the desire to want to be right. The ego wants to be like, I know this and I know that and I'm this, I'm that. My skin complexion is darker than yours. So I have more information and knowledge because I'm the chosen people, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Because at the end of the day, spirit has no color. Spirit doesn't have a pigmentation. And spirit doesn't need melanin neither. <laughs> spirit doesn't need carbon. It doesn't need oxygen. It just is, right? With that being said, before I give my concluding thoughts to this episode, I would like for you to provide, you know, anything, lasting words or concluding thoughts for this episode that you want to give. And also, let the listeners know where they can find you if they want to hear you speak or if they want to see information on the social media platforms of the content you provide because you starting you just did your first live yeah. so you're going to obviously be doing more of them and I'll definitely be participating in those give your thoughts concluding thoughts and then of course let the people know where they can find you and then these links that she's going to tell you are going to also be in the description box for you to tap on my my concluding thoughts are this to truly master your critical thinking you have to be able to love yourself that's a start loving yourself looking to yourself trusting yourself and understanding that just like a seed everyone should understand just a seed has been given all the information that it needs to become the tree or plant that it's supposed to become all it needs is the right environment to grow strong you are that seed everything you need is inside you it's been there it's written there you just need you have to give yourself the right environment and so you have to think about how you treat yourself, how you love yourself, what you put into your body. Once you begin to really love yourself, it's going to be easy for you to start to see these things around you. Think about them actively, logically, and make decisions that best work for the reality that you are trying to manifest for yourself. Well said. And can you please let the people know where they can find you and give that information as well? So you can find me on TikTok is Kitty K E Y T E S T A X, and then you can find me on IG at, at Kitty Stacks One. Okay, great. Kitty's definitely stick around, and I'm going to give some concluding my concluding statement to this episode and some of my thoughts to end this episode. And uh, you heard it from Kitty, somebody who has actually done studying on this. This is not just the fact that she knows this through her experiences, but she's actually specifically studied the this thing called critical thinking, which is a way of life. So I definitely urge you that if you want to gain some spiritual understanding and understanding, definitely follow Kitty Stacks on her social media platforms, whether it be uh, TikTok or on her Instagram page as well, which we will have linked up because she has a lot of knowledge, but she comes from a perspective that she's not judging anything. She's not trying to, you know, proclaim herself as some type of guru. 
She's giving you her experience from her understanding and she's just expressing it the best way she can to help you become more rooted in universal truth so that you can be empowered with aware and hopefully have the utmost awareness within yourself. So I want to give you divine honest KT for coming on to my show. You've you provided valuable information and I know that this is going to help people that get to listen to this show. So with that being said, let's get into these into this closing concluding thoughts from your brother from the same creator. So here we go. So in conclusion, people, critical thinking is not just a skill. It is a way of life. It is the cornerstone of this thing that we call here in the United Shenanigans of America called democracy, but it's really just a way of life. But it's also the bedrock of our civilization and the essence of what it means to be a human or the spiritual being having the physical experience. Also, in the age of uncertainty that we live in and all of the upheaval of disagreements and the battle duality, is our most important it's our most important precious asset our most potent weapon in the spiritual warfare and our greatest hope for a better future for not just us but for those that are going to come after the future of our generations so let us embrace the power of critical thinking and let us cultivate it with this building of conscious minds and let us strive to build a world where reason reigns supreme over everything, where truth triumphs over the falsehoods and where the light of knowledge banishes the shadows of ignorance once and for all. So with that being said, don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is and always will be within you. So light up the tunnel and find your way through the darkness. And when you live in the present, there is always an opportunity for a new beginning. So start your new beginning today, now. All right? Peace, love, and light. Thank you for listening to this episode of Network of Awareness. If you would like to join or find out more about our show, please subscribe and follow us at networkofawareness.com or your favorite podcast listening platforms. If you would like for us to discuss any specific topic you would like to listen to, leave us a message on our website or you can directly email us at ORA at networkofawareness.com. Now, tune in to one of the fastest growing podcast shows on social, spiritual and self-awareness. With that being said, people living in the present being directed by what's given in the hour-long sessions, mind-blowing confessions of improvement that needs checking. Welcome it all is, tuning out, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings.